I think it's no secret that what we're experiencing in America, in the major cities, it has its good and its bad. One is, in the major cities, we have this term which is called gentrification. Uh, I don't like using the term because gentrification, its term means to people coming back to the cities, but people are already in the cities. I like to use the term transformation. What happens is um, extreme urban neighborhoods, which once were violent and, and, and lots of homes were dilapidated and that kind of thing, um, especially if they're close to downtown areas, um, uh, they go through a transformation in that they become trendy, uh, home prices go up, lots of building happens. Um, and so which, what once was a black community suffering from all these social problems has become this trendy um, middle to upper class community where, no, where, where the former uh, people can no longer live because the taxes have gone up. Um, but what that does to the church, uh, I think, is, is, is not as concerning to, to, to the new neighbors. Um, and that is, the church suffers because the people no longer can live in the neighborhoods. Uh, they move, and, and the church stays there. But then the church has to find a way to reach out to those new people who come into the neighborhoods. And a difficult thing for a black church to try to reach out to white people um, is that now it has to think not as a black church dealing with social problems, but now we're a, a black church that's trying to uh, deal with um, <laughs> uh, um, problems of success, climbing higher in, 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 this, in, in, in the workforce, and so you just change your focus. Um, but I'm not sure black churches are able to do that. And the other problem comes in often in gentrified neighborhoods, there are younger professional people and really are unchurched and have no desire to be churched. And so it becomes more of an evangelism uh, method rather than it is telling them about church. You, you, so you build relationships. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing now within my church, which is in one of these neighborhoods, is trying to build relationships by speaking uh, uh, with, with the new neighbors, inviting them to different functions, um, having neighborhood block parties and, and welcome them in and, 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 and just and just trying to be there and for them to see that the church is not just a place of religion, but the church has a social concern for them, a church has, has a community concern for them, and it's not, it's not a place that's, that's not welcoming to them. They want them to see the church as a place where they're welcome to come, and we're not particularly asking them to come to church to get saved. We just want them to come to church to, to be a part of the community. Uh, and that's been a difficult piece. Um, and it's not just my church, but churches probably throughout this nation, uh, black churches where, 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 where uh, uh, um, white people are coming to the neighborhoods and they really don't want to go to a black church. And I've, I've heard it happen in uh, formerly white neighborhoods um, that have transitioned into black communities. Reminds me of, of a, a movie I watched, Finding Forest. If you haven't seen Finding Forest, a dynamite movie, you need to see it. In Finding Forrester, um, this character uh, who is an older white man, a professor, um, he befriends this young basketball phenom uh, who's black and, and from the, the neighborhood. And when when the, when the young black basketball protege uh, asked uh, Sean Connery, who is playing this older white um, uh, professor, he asked him, uh, why are you in this neighborhood? And Sean Connery said, well, I didn't change. The neighborhood changed. And I think 
that's so typical of these neighborhoods. We don't change. The neighborhoods change. But I think what it means is change is good in that we see differently, we, we, we speak to people who we hadn't spoken to before, and it just makes us more understanding of the difference that God has created. Otherwise, we'll be so close-minded that we can't see beyond our own likes and dislikes. And so, if you haven't seen that movie, it's dynamite to talk about gentrification and what happens in gentrification. But at the end of the movie, um, they build this, this, this bond and uh, Sean Connery eventually dies and, and he leaves everything to this young man. Um, but both of them grew because of the relationships they built with one another. And that's what I see in gentrified neighborhoods. It's an opportunity for both people to grow um, because they're now relating with folk they hadn't related to before.